So let's talk about some common protocols. In fact, you've probably heard of about a lot of these protocols already, but let's talk about some of these protocols and what they do. And we're going to get more and more in depth into these protocols as we go through this course. So we're gonna go over several different protocols, but we're also gonna start talking about ports. Now, I don't really wanna get really in depth into what ports are right now, but let's go over just to get a basic understanding of what ports are and know that there are certain ports that are generally associated with certain protocols. And so they're not always associated, but generally speaking, they're associated. There's some common ports and common protocols that are associated with those ports. So uh, here we have a computer and your computer has a lot of physical ports and virtual ports. Physical ports are just physical connections. You're already familiar with those. Those would be things like USB. When you plug a mouse into a USB, when you plug a uh, keyboard, when you plug something into that USB port, then it makes a connection to the computer. Well, when computers communicate back and forth, they also communicate via virtual ports and those virtual ports are assigned numbers and so you'll have a bunch of different virtual ports that are on your computer and some of them may be open to the world some of them may be closed um, so we will you know maybe it's port 22 is is open on there maybe port 110 maybe port 443 if it's port 443 i can generally say that it's probably going to be a web server that that you have running on that and so that's because because there's certain uh, ports that are associated with certain protocols. So let's take a look at some of those different protocols and the ports that are associated with them. DHCP, or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, operates on port 67. If your computer, when you connect into a network and you turn it on, most likely it's not going to have an IP address associated with it. You can statically assign IP addresses to computers, but that's generally not an accepted way of doing it because when you move a computer from one location to another, it needs to dynamically get a new address. And so it does that through the DHCP service. And so the computer, once you plug it in and turn it on, it will shout out onto the network and say, hey, I'm out here and I need an IP address. And it's shouting it out and looking for that port 67 that's open and a server that's running DHCP services will then reply and say, oh, I've got an address for you, and then give that computer an address. Once it has an address, then it's able to communicate to other devices on that network and outside of that network. So that's dynamic host configuration protocol, and it's what sets up things like an IP address. It sets up the mask. It sets up the gateway, sets up DNS, and lots of other things that you can do with DHCP. It's actually a really cool service and offers a lot of different options and a lot of cool things that you can do with DHCP. DNS is also another real critical service and protocol that your computer uses to communicate on the internet. DNS is domain name system. DNS is generally found on port 53. And so what DNS does is it allows us to communicate on the internet using friendly names. So the problem is, is that when we're communicating, when computers are communicating, they're using IP addresses. But when you go to Google, you're not going to 172.16.33.4 or whatever the Google addresses are, but you're going to google.com or www.google.com. And so how does that communication happen? How does it translate from google.com and translate into an IP address is using DNS. And so a computer will go out there and say, hey, I'm, and ask the DNS server, I need to know where google.com is. It will get an, an IP address and then it can make a connection to that server to get the information that it needs. HTTP 
is a protocol you're probably familiar with. HTTP is Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It's generally found on port 80, although quite often I've seen if you're hosting a little web server in your house or you're hosting it online and you want to keep it a little more secure, there are times when I've seen people use port 8080 or some other obscure port that uh, to, to obfuscate it, to, to make it um, a little less present. Uh, but generally, you'll find it on port 80. And uh, HTTP is what you, when you go to a browser and you type in um, a, a, a name like google.com, and uh, that will go to HTTP. Um, although, actually, it, it's less and less HTTP and it's more HTTPS nowadays. Even um, most sites are moving over to everything being encrypted, where uh, in the past it's only been some sites that have been encrypted, where most things in are encrypted now. So uh, this computer right here needs to go to google.com and it'll communicate across the internet and, uh, and that information will come back and be presented to that computer and that's all using HTTP. It's what you're using within your browser. HTTPS is Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. And so really what it is is HTTP, but it adds a secure component to it. It used to be SSL, but now it adds TLS, which is another protocol that makes it secure or encrypts the traffic. And so take HTTP and you encrypt that traffic and now you have HTTPS. And so that generally operates on 443. This is actually much more common nowadays in that HTTP used to be the common way that you connected out to internet web pages. And now it adds at most, if you connect connect to most servers using HTTP, it will now redirect you to the HTTPS and you'll get the secure connection. SMTP is Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. It operates off of port 25. What it does is it sends email from one location to the next. Now, when you are on your client machine and you get onto, um, you know, your wherever you store your email. Now, a lot of times that's through HTTPS, and so we're not talking about that. But we're talking about when you get onto your email client. If you have some sort of email client on your computer, then you send mail. Then that is going through SMTP or port 25, and then that is sent to a server. And uh, then that server then figures out where that email needs to go and then will send that to that other computer or that other server, that other email server using SMTP port 25. Um, so now nowadays, once again, we're actually using more secure connections. So SMTP is not used as much as it was used before, um, but we're using other secure methods to make that connection, that uh, connections that are encrypted. POP3 or Post Office Protocol version three, it's the third version of this, uh, uses port 110. So we already mentioned with SMTP, you are sending email uh, via port 25 or SMTP. But when you get onto your computer and you have an email client and you download your messages, you're using POP3 or port 110. So we've got a mail server right here and that email then gets downloaded onto your machine using uh, POP3, the post office protocol um, version three. SSH is one that you'll probably get really familiar with over time. SSH is Secure Shell. It uses port 22, and we have a client machine right here, and we have a server, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect to that server using SSH, and we console into that server. So that means when we're sitting here on our machine right here, we're going to enter commands. It will go over to that other server. That server will interpret what it needs to respond with and then send the information back to your screen all in text. And so this is a really great one to, to, to control, to get onto machines remotely and make connections remotely to manage those different servers and those different machines using SSH port 22. Similar to SSH is RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol, where SSH is to get into the command line and manipulate a server or a machine via the command line. 
RDP is a way to get into that machine and control it with a graphical interface. Just a reminder, hit that like button. Remote Desktop Protocol uses port 3389. It's largely associated with Windows machines, and you remote into the machine to control it using your mouse and the same graphics. It's almost like you're, you're on the machine. It's almost like um, you're, uh, even though you're manipulating it from afar, it feels like you're, you're right on that machine. FTP is File Transfer Protocol. FTP is a little bit more unique than other uh, protocols in that it uses two ports for uh, communicating and for sending data. And so port 21 and 20 are associated with FTP. And so what a computer will do, uh, this is the client machine, and it will make a connection using port 21 and do all of the uh, connection-oriented stuff and the commands through port 21. And then if you are downloading or uploading files, because that's what this proto protocol does, it's a file transfer protocol, it, it, it uploads and downloads files. And so if you're uploading and downloading file, it will do that on port 20. So it's a little more unique than other devices, uh, other protocols, because it's actually using uh, multiple ports to make the connection and to do the data transfer. Okay, one more protocol before we move on to another topic. So the protocol, the last protocol is NTP or Network Time Protocol. It uses port 123. NTP is a way for your computer to keep uh, an accurate time. And so what it will do is uh, your computer has an NTP server set on it. Uh, and it will go and reach out to whatever um, that is set to, that server, and that server then will respond with the appropriate time, the accurate time, so then your computer gets an update to the time. And this is important because, number one, I mean, it's nice to look at your clock and know that it's accurate. But the other thing, too, is, is there are some protocols that don't function well if the time's off. For instance, Kerberos, if it gets too far off from other machines, then you can actually cause some problems with it. Um, and it won't function correctly. And so it's important that your your the clock on your computer is on time. Otherwise, uh, there, you could actually see some little interesting effects uh, if it gets too far off. Um, but mainly, we really just want to look at the clock and say, hey, uh, the time is right, right? Um, so that's NTP.